be seated at this time. Additional seating is available in the far left and right sides of the room. We would also ask that everyone respect and follow all COVID guidelines strictly and avoid physical contact with fellow attendees to avoid possible exposure. Our goal is to lovingly and safely share in the final tribute while keeping others as well as ourselves safe in doing so. Please maintain reasonable distance from others when at all possible so that all guests are not made to feel uncomfortable. We the family extend a warm welcome to all. Thank you for all of your attendance, both physical and virtual for our beloved Amber. This time the viewing will begin. And we, Tony Campbell will, redact, will direct the viewers and reseat them. Friends and family, we would like to ask everyone to be seated at this time. Additional seating is available in the far left and far right sides of the room. We would also ask that everyone respect and follow all COVID guidelines strictly and avoid physical contact with fellow attendees to avoid possible exposure. Our goal is to lovingly and safely share in a final tribute while keeping others as well as ourselves safe in doing so. Please maintain reasonable distance from others when at all possible so that all guests are not made to feel uncomfortable. We the family extend a warm welcome to all. Thank you for your attendance, both physical and virtual, for our beloved Amber. Hello everyone, thank you for being here. Uh, we will now have the reading of the obituary um, read by Alana Sanders. Good morning everyone. Amber Nelshawn Alston, 45 years of age, was born in Passaic, New Jersey on May 20th, 1976 to parents Shirley Alston Reeves and Nelson Powell Alston. She is survived by her sisters, Chana Chacha Ellis, Stephanie Bierko, Tara Hilliard, Marcia Wooden, Melissa Reeves, brother Ronnie Shepard, twin slash cousin slash brother Andre M. Austin, and Riddell Butch Reeves Jr., brother-in-law Jay Sanchez, a group of nieces and nephews, Aunt Gladys Austin Massey, and Uncle Bill Austin. Special sisters, Alana Sanders, Marva Conway, Karen Nisi Bess, and sister-in-law, Christina Ellis. Special aunties, Joan Bates, Olivia Webster, her R or D, Iris Lammers, Randy Irwin, Marlo Castillo, Bruce Glass, Solomon Johnson, Omar Calloway, Kina, the Olds family, Carl Thomas Raymond Tidwell, Beth Israel Staff, Newark, New Jersey, and Jay Shinadu, UMD, and Jay. Her beloved and cherished fur baby, Boosie Cat, fur baby, niece, Diamond, and fur baby, nephew, Babe. A huge number of wonderfully loving cousins and great lifelong friends. The loving and supportive congregation of Jehovah Witness, the Russo family, University Hospital, I yellow and support staff, Susan B. Geary, Zanita Person, and hospice team, Ms. Dell and staff. University Hospital receptionist, Ms. Sandra and co-workers, Yashima Tanisha Waddell, Darren Gordon, Darren Gordon Jr., and the love of aunts, uncles, friends, family that have passed on. All this love transcends space and time. A very special and heartfelt thanks to Mr. Tyrone, Tyrone Muhammad of Cotton Funeral Home of, of all the care and kindness and support. Our beloved Amber departed in life on September 21st, 2021, in the company of her loving mother and sister Chana, covered in prayers from friends and family at the University Hospital of Newark, New Jersey. As a child growing up, she resided in Passaic, New Jersey, and later relocated to Hillside, New Jersey, where her education began. She was a graduate of Hillside High School and continued on to trade school. 
She went on to care for the, for, the, for the patients in her field of home health aid. Later, she moved on. Her last place of employment was HelloFresh in Newark, New Jersey. Amber was a very loving and caring person. That love was extended to humans and animals alike. She was helpful to friends and family and cared enough to feed stray animals. Her laughter was contagious <laughs> and she had a zest for life. She was a young woman full of potential, intelligent, generous, and so much fun to be around. She was super fashionable, loved new clothes, new hairstyles, and hair colors. <laughs> <laughs> she, could, she could wear anything and look perfectly gorgeous. Nothing ever seemed beyond her reach. She would set goals and accomplish anything she would apply herself to. Her bond with family and friends was immeasurable and irreplaceable. It was a love to be treasured and appreciated. Her time with us was avoidably and tragically cut short to the, sh to the extreme devastation of her loved ones. We would ask that you, that in honor, that people would stop and think con and consider your actions moving forward. We should recognize a person's need for help in lieu of being an active participant or a contributing factor concerning their illness. We cannot control the behavior of others but what we can do is avoid becoming a participant, supplier, or partner to someone who is obviously and visibly in need of help. Mm -hmm. Those simple considerations could be life-saving factors and may avoid a precious life being lost in this way. Sharing in the harmful behavior will have repercussions and death as it has come here and, that, and it could be the result of it. It is better to separate yourself than to participate in someone's addiction, especially a person you profess to care for. Our lives have been forever changed. Let her loss be a constant reminder to do and be better for yourself, for others, and for others. If ever Amber's love and life was touched your own, keep in mind that actions have consequences. Be part of a healing solution, not an active part of the problem. It could be a matter of life and death, and this could, could be how the turn up ends. Thank you from the family and friends in honor of Amber and Austin. Gone too soon. We will now have the reading of the personalized poem inspired by the love of mom, Shirley Austin Reeves, for Amber, composed and read by her sister, Chana Chacha Ellis. This is a poem that I wrote. It was inspired by the love that my mother had for my sister, Amber. <clears throat> And it's called My Beautiful Daughter. My beautiful daughter, last of my womb, light of our lives, extinguished too soon. My beautiful daughter, our hearts ache with pain. A life without you is one that won't be the same. My beautiful daughter, who I cradled in my arms, my lifelong work was to protect you from harm. My beautiful daughter, whose smile warmed my heart, I never imagined that it would be you who'd depart. My beautiful daughter, your struggle's now over. You now rest in the memory of the almighty Jehovah. My beautiful daughter, sleep peacefully, boo. Our hope for resurrection will bring me to you. Love eternally, mommy. Thank you. We will now share in reflections. No, we will now have the reading of a poem inspired by the love of her sisters, shared with us by Melissa Reeves, written by China Ellis. Sister shares 
special bond. And then last here to be on. It's infinite and far, transcends negativity, pain, or tragic ends. These are the biggest part of all the things that complete the heart. Sisters are the ones that care for every thought and feeling shared. Sisters fight as siblings do, <laughs> but in good time, things are like new. A sister's part of who you are, a precious jewel, a shining star. A sister's love, one of a kind, a truer love you'll never find. <clears throat> a sister is a forever friend whose perfect love will never end. A sister is a gift in life who helps you with all the stress and strife. Sisters are the greatest part of all the things that please the heart. Amber. Amber, this is also true because these things we've had in you. <laughs> From your sisters with infinite love. Read by Tom. We will now share in reflections, the first of which will be shared by Iris Lammers in behalf of Sister China Cha Cha Ellis. Life with my beloved sister Amber was nothing short of fun, joy, good times, and laughter. And although we spoiled her, she was the hopeless victim of my Cha Cha's endless pranks. Like I would collect every alarm clock in the house, and we have plenty. And I would hide them in various places throughout her room, having set them all at different hours of the night. It would be on weekends, and Amber was a deep sleeper. Alarms would be systematically going off. She would jump up disoriented and half asleep, rushing around her room thinking, was she late for school? In her days confused at first. Then throughout the rest of the night, alarm after alarm would be sounding, <laughs> leaving her rummaging around trying to find the ringing alarm so she can return to bed until the next one would ring. <laughs> she, would be <laughs> she would be hunting clocks till morning. <laughs> and Bob quickly became so aware of my impending deviousness that she would, <laughs> she would have her back facing me or I could be in another room scheming, and she would say, don't even try it, Jaja. -ja. Don't you do it. <laughs> I'd be fascinated because it would happen at the very moment I'd be thinking of something to do to her. She, <laughs> she would crack up, yeah, we would crack up laughing at her, at her accuracy. It was like we were one mind. She was the most ideal little sister in the world. Words cannot express how empty my world will be without her being here where she needs need it the most. Our lady friend would like to give a heartfelt thanks to the pallbearers, Andre Austin, Bruce Glass, Sodom Johnson, Omar Calloway, and the Cotton Funeral Home staff. Special thanks to Mr. Tony Campbell for his loving direction. Thank you to the conductor of the service and readers, Alana Sanders, Melissa Reeves, Iris Lammers, and China Ellis. Our amazing master designer, Mr. Mario Castillo of Distinctive Designs, who is working nothing, whose work is nothing short of being the best. Mr. Raymond Tidwell, for the virtual viewing which we lovingly allow friends and family to see. Second family to share and view at the uh, comfort and convenience of their homes. A service greatly needed during these difficult times. The link provided on the front of the obituary will be active for use for one week. We extend loving thanks to Brother Man Marvin Outlaw who will provide a eulogy at the end of the service. A stream will be available using the link that can also be located on the obituary. And last but not least, 
Time must be taken to sincerely thank Mr. Tyrone Muhammad of Cotton's Funeral Service, whose personal dedication and care in assisting us in making this tribute everything we requested and needed it to be. Tyrone Muhammad has cons consistently gone beyond all hopes and expectations to ensure complete comfort, personalized attention, and satisfaction. He brings a special peace to the transition. His, he is exceptional in care. We thank the immediate staff of Cotton's Funeral Home and their associates for the kindness and warmth and professionalism that they have provided the family concerning our beloved Amber's, Amber's dignity and care. We thank you for the safety provisions and assurances that Mr. Muhammad and staff have provided in order to keep us all safe during this pandemic. You have added comfort, safety, and service, which has given us peace. Peace of mind for this gathering and loving tribute. We appreciate all your efforts, Mr. Tyrone Muhammad and the staff of Cotton's Funeral Home. And again, we thank you for the very bottom of our hearts for making this a special this day, making special this day for Amber, our, be our beloved Amber. service, whether you're here in the building or virtually, we greatly appreciate your participation. We also would like to thank the family. I would like to thank you personally for acknowledging myself during the service, and I'd like to thank you for acknowledging uh, Mr. Muhammad and the rest of our staff. We don't take it lightly, and it's greatly appreciated. At this time, the family will have a final viewing. We're going to ask that everyone remain silent. 
until we uh, direct you around. Once we direct you around, we're gonna ask that you quietly take your seats that way we make a crew to services, okay? Thank you so much.
Friends, the tournament will take place at the Evergreen Cemetery located in Hillside, New Jersey. We're asking all those that will be going with us to go directly to your cars, turn on your hazard lights, your headlights, and prepare to follow as closely as safety permits. At this time, we're going to ask everyone to please stand. Paul Burris, step forward for those that want to program. Anyone else, you can remain where you are. Paul Burns is going to meet us out front when we took the temperature out. <laughs>
I saw somebody else's funeral from Newark on this site. Not you, not this one. I never came over.